Welcome back Guardians. Today I want to talk about an odd thing that occurred in week 1 of Season of the Seraph, Scorn on the Moon. During the moon heist we fought Scorn, and what was more concerning was the Scorn mind tethered to the AI core, Eremus's captain Pyrus. At the time I literally said, that's weird, and then I sort of got distracted by the Eremus punishment comment that Mara made. But then when I really started to think about the Scorn, their connection to the darkness, how Callus previously used them, I realized this was a whole lot worse than I first thought, and the Witness likely just gained valuable data from the AI core. So stick around for how I think the Witness is already winning, and how this will connect with Neptune and Neomuna in Livefall. Also, it might be helpful to have some sub-mind background, see my previous video on the sub-minds for more information, and also, I'll be live over on Twitch playing the new dungeon when this video goes live. But before starting, this video is sponsored by The Ridge Wallet, which has up to 40% off on selected items until December 22nd. Just click the link in the description or go to ridge.com slash mylan. Someone yesterday asked me on stream, go on, go get your Ridge Wallet, like they were trying to catch me out because I said that I use it every day. Yes, this is my everyday wallet and I do use this. I was the one to approach Ridge to ask them to have some ongoing sponsorship because I really like the product. I just prefer it over like a big bulky wallet that's gonna get completely and utterly trashed in like six months. They come in a bunch of different colors, styles, and it has RFID blocking technology too to protect you from digital pickpocketers. If you already have your wallet sorted, maybe you also want to organize your keys with the key cases, just like the Ridge wallet, they come in a range of colors and designs. It is getting close to your last chance to get up to 40% off selected items. Just visit ridge.com slash Marlin before December 22nd. That's all you have to do. Just click the link in the description and pick something up either for yourself or someone else for the holidays. And if you don't love it, you can send it back within 99 days for a full refund. With that, let's begin this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Let me explain some important backstory about the Scorn. The Scorn are dead Elixni reanimated through the use of darkness-infused ether. In Forsaken, Prince Aldrin finds a mortally wounded Fickrel, and it's implied that Aldrin wishes, as in an Ahamkara wish, wishes Fickrel back to life, creating dark ether. Fickrel will then go on to resurrect a Scorn army. The Scorn are described as a mindless army with a natural connection to the darkness. Before Callus was a disciple, Callus used the Scorn as a vessel to communicate with the Witness. This is the story of the Glycon. Essentially, Callus took the ship, the Glycon, to the anomaly of Mars, before Mars returned, and using Scorn with the assistance of Scions and the Crown of Sorrow, he filled the Scorn with darkness to communicate with the Witness. Let me read to you a couple of lore entries that explains this. Entry 4, Well of Absence from the lore book Captain's Log reads, Come, Quinzik says, leading me inside the lab to a bundle of large vats adorned with all manner of pumps and wiring. This, she slides a viewing port open on the frontmost vat. Rabid scorn eyes lock with mind through the viewport. Dark fluid roils as a creature flails and fumes muted shrieks into the liquid. Natural connection to darkness made stronger. Their minds linked like owls, but without barons, there is nothing to fill them. I watch it claw frantically against the vat wall until I hear the grating tone of bone raw fingertips digging into the metal. A touch more violent than I expect from a mindless thing, I say. They subsist off the last thought imposed on them. Kill for Fickrel, for the lost prince, but Quinzik presses her hand to the tank. She fixates her eye on the scorn and it mellows. Her words are strained. With effort, their psyche is a vessel, through which many expressions can commune. She releases the scorn, exhausted, and it drowns again, eyes shrieking terror. Too many for this one to inhabit. How does that help us? Callus will draw the darkness into them, and we will squeeze from them all they know. And this, Entry 6, Excess of Avarice, from the same law book. It reads, My counsellors place their hands on the crown and focus cognition through it. They pry open the Scorn's collective synaptic pathways and slow them into the fabric of the anomaly's mimetic sphere. The glycon strains against the pull. 
We can also confirm that the Scorn did form a communication bridge with the Witness, not only because Callus would later become a disciple, but also because of the law entry number 9, Heretical Flesh, where the empty vessel Scorn hear the words, meet salvation. Within Destiny Law, the Witness is the primary character to talk about being our salvation. So when it says meet salvation, it is technically saying they met the Witness, they made contact with the Witness. Have a listen to the law entry Heretical Flesh. It reads, The spine of the glycon breaks, its vertebrae now interchanging. Scorn how to herald the crossing into nothing. Through the locusts, they hear the whispers and obey. Meet salvation. In addition, most would associate Egregor also with the Scorn, as the Egregor first appeared on the glycon with the Scorn. Inhaling the Egregor spores connects you to a darkness network, also monitored by the Witness. This is told to us in a patrol mission aboard the Leviathan. The point is, the Witness has this darkness network that is used to gather information, and the Scorn are part of this framework. So with this in mind, have a listen to some of the dialogue from week 1 of Season of the Seraph. Firstly, the game goes out of its way to tell you that Scorn have been resurrected on the moon. I do assume Fickrell could still be alive. I read that recently he fled the reef, however I can't actually find the quote or gameplay dialogue to confirm that. Regardless, someone is able to create new Scorn, and they made new Scorn on the moon for a specific reason. Remember that Zivu Wrath, who is working with the Witness, controls the Wrathborn, but Zivu doesn't use the Wrathborn on the moon, she used the Scorn. Have a listen. Scorn on the moon is a first. They shipping these in from Savathun's throne world? No, these Scorn have not passed through the Ascendant Plane. They were exhumed locally. Then we get this dialogue before we enter the vault, confirming our fears. The Witness is using the Scorn as an empty vessel to transfer data. The same data that we are after, so that we can restore Rasputin and regain control of the Warsat network. A network capable of causing an extinction level event. Have a listen. You were right, Mara. That Scorn's definitely trying to corrupt the Submind and... Using some weird interface to copy out files? Luckily, it looks like Malahayati's rewriting itself with repair protocols every time we clear the bunker, so damage is minimal. I suspect the Witness is treating this Scorn as a living archive, copying important information to its mind for safekeeping. Troubling. Notice how the Scorn is still able to make copies of the data, but Malahayati is just restoring it so we too can gain access. Once you enter the vault, you see the Scorn who is tethered to the core, it is a previous captain of Eremis, Pyrus. After defeating the Scorn, it says this. That Scorn, her armor. She served as captain, a marksman under Eremis. Risen as a nexus of Zivu's control here, to exert her will on the submine, if that's what it was doing. To defile Eremis's house. This is not an act of desperation. It is punishment, nevertheless. This victory will disrupt Zivu Arath's hold over the Scorn on Luna. At least for a while. I've got Mala's core packed. Exfil incoming. Go. I still hold questions that require answers. Time will tell what they are. Knowing what we know about the Scorn and Eremis, this makes sense. Eremis failed the witness in acquiring the pieces of Nezarak, so now she is punished by seeing her former captain essentially resurrected as a zombie and being used as a fleshy USB to extract data from the Submind archives. Now considering that the Scorn are connected to the witness, I do think that the witness is getting access to this data. Like Anna said previously, we minimize the damage, but that does not mean that the Scorn are not copying and transmitting some of this information. I think we're going to lead the Witness straight to Neptune and Neomuna. We're going to track down these sub-mines that contain information leading to Neomuna. In the opening cutscene for Season of the Seraph, Osiris explains that Rasputin is the greatest bastion for Golden Age data, and Osiris hopes Rasputin will have information so he can better understand the memories he stole from Savathun about Neptune, as the Hidden have already been to Neptune but cannot discover the city. 
have a listen to the opening cutscene. Savathun couldn't conceal every thought. Some I stole. One of Neptune. The collapse. A turning point. It's a... Uh, it's a blur. I cannot focus. Pass me the rent. The Hidden found nothing there, but I saw it. Through the Witch Queen's eyes. A city set against the waves. Sounds like a trick. And Cora thinks I need to rest. Huh. The gall. You've really made no progress while I was indisposed. Is that why you're here, Osiris? My Cora won't listen. Wonder where she got that from. Red's scrambled in there. Degrading. He's dying. The war mind is our greatest bastion of Golden Age data. I need what it knows. I've tried everything. I, I can't even access his protocols. But perhaps your grandfather could. Osiris? That man? No. Clovis Bray is a... is a maniac. A selfish, murderous monster. So was Rasputin. But it might be the only option I have left. Just as Clovis might be yours. When did hope cease to require risk? Obviously, this season has two main storylines. The first is to restore Rasputin and prevent Ziva Arath taking control of the Warsat network. The second is unraveling Osiris' vision of Neptune. I think these storylines are going to merge by revealing that the sub-mines of Rasputin contain near Moon as a location. As we track down these sub-mines, the Witness will continue to have Scorn steal and transmit the data through the Darkness network, which will lead to the release of Lightfall. Both Guardians and The Witness will discover Neomuna around the same time. Well, that's my prediction. With that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can have the word scorn. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.